But let's start the show in Columbia with Shane Beamer. They're about uh, a week or so into spring down there in Columbia. And that was kind of something they really hit on during uh, his media availability here. Going into week two, so many transfers, fresh faces across the Carolina roster. And, you know, we spend so much time talking about uh, Spencer Rattler, but there's many other potentially huge impact transfers on the South Carolina Gamecock roster that we need to recognize. And it starts with, uh, you know, maybe a guy that's not fair to group him in here because he's not yet in Columbia, but Austin Stogner, the Oklahoma tight end. When I went back and watched Spencer Rattler down there in Norman, it was eye-catching how huge this Austin Stogner was. He should be a legit target in this offense. We got Terrell Dawkins, the defensive lineman from North Carolina. Everybody's raving about De- Devonnie Reed, the safety for Central Michigan. Antoine Wells, you probably don't know that name now. The rest of the SEC is going to learn it real quick. The James Madison the standout. I mean, he's breaking records at James Madison. He played there a year and a half. He's got plenty of year eligibility remaining at South Carolina. I think he's going to develop as a real target here in this offense. Christian Beal Smith, the former Wake Forest running back to add some depth. And Lavoisier Carroll, of course, a name that uh, they know in Athens. Former touted recruit, played defensive back for the Bulldogs. Now he's transitioning to running back for the Gamecocks. But you're adding veterans. You're adding experienced veterans, guys that have produced at the Power 5 level all across the sport, and you're adding that to a team that just surprised many by going to a bowl game, and not only that, but whooping North Carolina in the process. So that's something that Shane Beamer hit on here. Year two, what uh, are the lessons learned for him in this program? And I really liked uh, this comment. Year two, what's different for Shane Beamer Steve Spurrier, co-coach of the year for a first-time head coach last season, knocked it out of the park. What's it like going into year two of his program? One is just doing it the second time through, knowing what's coming, and 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 you know every day something's going to happen that you don't prepare for. And and Coach Spurrier used to always tell me, be flexible. You know that things happen, and you got to be able to adjust and stuff like that. And I and I get it. You know, understanding that. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing, Mike, is just knowing, um, one, that the players in this program better, you know, in year two and what makes them tick and their backgrounds and their stories and, and their challenges and goals and things like that. I feel like that helps me better as a coach because I have better relationships with the guys that have been here, you know, for, for both uh, for for last year and then now this year. So I know how to, you know, connect and reach guys better. Um, you're constantly learning and, and trying to do a better job of that. They know me, you know, better as well. And then, like I said, just kind of when I say what's coming, when when you get into to April and when you get into May and planning and things like that, just having a better handle on, on things like that from that standpoint. But, I mean, every day, I mean, I've told you guys before, I'm a, I'm a manicu- meticulous, meticulous, it's a new word, meticulous uh, note taker. So, Constantly just writing things down and, and trying to learn and, and looking back at last year and, and some of the things that I wrote from last year at this time and, and and whatnot. So you're constantly learning, constantly trying to find a ways to get better, but certainly feel like I got a better handle on on everything a year later, if that makes sense. Now, of course, this time last year, anytime Shane Beamer came up, all they wanted to talk about was Frank Beamer and the, the legendary – Virginia Tech coach, and for good reason. I mean, he's a, a pillar of this sport. It would not be what it is without Frank Beamer, so we, let's give him his credit. But there was a lot to be learned from his legendary dad and coach continuity. Let's be honest, even uh, the biggest diehard South Carolina fans, many in the media calling for guys like Marcus Satterfield to get out and be gone after one year. And, that, hey, I'm right there with him, so I'm not throwing those people under the bus. South Carolina's offense was just so inconsistent, so terrible. I believe our guy uh, Adam McClintock, the CFB professor, had Marcus Satterfield as the 109th, leading the 109th most efficient offense in the country due to his metrics. I mean, that's that's just god-awful. That is <laughs> that is a guy you fire after one year. But 
you know, circumstances, certainly the offensive line was a disaster. The quarterback position was a disaster for much of the season with injuries and everything that went into play there. Running back broke his back right before the season started. I mean, so many things went wrong. Shane Beamer, of course, had to evaluate all that in his decision-making. And here he is talking about just the value, not only for bringing the staff back, but something he learned from his dad there at Virginia Tech and how this is going to help the players, everybody being in the same system, same coaches, many of these players coming back for this, a second season under Shane Beamer and how that should pay dividends this season in the fall there for the Gamecocks. Shane, uh, you know, with the assistance that, that you guys were able to, to hang on to, I, I guess at, at what point during the – whether it's during spring or off season or maybe even into fall camp where it just kind of hits you as the head coach of, of just the importance of being able to uh, keep those guys on for another year, keep that continuity and kind of also how that translates into uh, player performance as well. Yeah, no, I think it's huge, Corey. Um, one, it's nothing that I realized. I mean, I already knew it and I saw that from my dad. You know, if you look at his coaching staffs at Virginia Tech, they stayed intact for the most part for his entire career. You know, he had Bud Foster on his defensive staff from not even that Virginia Tech starting in 1987, but going back to 1981 at Murray State. Um, Bud was on my dad's staff. So Bud I've known since I was two years old uh, when he was a player on my dad's team at Murray State. So for Bud to be there that entire time, he had the same defensive line coach from 1996 until – he retired in, in 2015, you know, had the same tight ends coach or tight ends coach slash O-line coach. Same guy was there for uh, since 1989, I guess, on and on and on and on. So it, 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 it's great for the continuity within your program, for sure. It's great for the continuity outside your program when it comes to recruiting because the same coaches are going in the same high schools year after year after year after year after year, and they know everyone in the school. They know who the eighth grader, ninth grader, 10th grader is coming up. And you don't have to like relearn that or educate yourself on a new area, on a new era, uh, uh, area recruiter uh, if you're the high school. And, and then just what you said, I mean, I've been really pleased with what our guys have been able to retain because they're not having to like teach a new system. And that was important for us on offense, defense, and special teams. For us offensively specifically, um, the best thing for us was to continue to build on the great things that we did last season and not have our entire offense have to learn a new offensive system. Uh, let's continue to find ways where we weren't very good last year in all three phases, and let's continue to evolve and take the next step in on offense, on defense, on special teams. And, you know, so far so good because we've been able to uh, – our guys are more confident and comfortable in those three phases or on those three phases with what we did last year, but we've also been able to take – you know, the next step and, and build on that as well. Offensively, the next step off some of the things that we did last season. Defense, defensively being able to, you know, expand the package, take the next step in some of the things that we did, whether it be from a coverage standpoint or pressure standpoint or or front techniques or, or whatnot. So it's it's huge and, and uh, something that will always be important to me, just the continuity year in, year out. I mean, and again, I've said it before, you're always going to do what's best for the program and, and making sure you got the right people in the program but to me when you can keep that group intact and, and continue to evolve it's a it's a great thing now with all this talk I mean expectations right I've said it myself I think South Carolina hovering right around that number 25 in the country I'm fine if they're not ranked in the preseason polls but I won't argue with it anywhere from 20 to 25 given uh, what we've seen year one and the fact that they are, have added a dynamic quarterback in Spencer Rattler who should change the game of that offense this fall in Columbia. But that's something Shane Beamer hit on, the fact that, uh, yeah, they, they may be getting some preseason buzz, but real, real quickly he puts that thing into perspective uh, given uh, who's on South Carolina's schedule this upcoming season. You know, um, handle success better. We talked about it in a team meeting this morning that we started out two and zero, then we went two and two. And then from that point on, we never won more than two in a row and we never lost more than two in a row. And 
there's some positives in that that you didn't lose two in a row. If you ever lost, you, you, you competed and you came right back the next week and won the football game. And there's great things uh, to learn from that, but also being able to handle that success. You know, when you have a great win over whoever it may be, Florida, being able to handle that success and perform better the following week and, 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 and whatnot, and, uh, or Auburn or whoever it was. Uh, but to me, it's just you realize all the work that went into winning seven games and realizing it's going to take that much and then more to take the next step. Um, everybody says to me, you know, we're going to be a, you're going to be a great, you may be preseason ranked and, and, and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, there's about eight opponents that are going to be ranked ahead of us in the preseason as well. So let's like keep this in perspective also, which is true. Uh, but I think it's just day to day right now, Ben, like how we, I know everybody talks about the process and, and only worried about today, but it's true. Like how good a day can we have today and just keep stacking good days. And we use the example with the team this morning, you know, we, we, we see the word accountability and talk around here and we talk about it a lot and, and we hold our guys accountable and everything, whether the things they're expected to do down in nutrition with Kristen to the weight room, to academics, to the training room, to the football part of it. And when you got a hundred plus guys in your program, it's hard You'd ex you expect it to, but it's hard to have every single person not have a single issue on any day. Something's going to happen, right, whether you like it or not. An 18-year-old freshman that just got here forgets he's supposed to be somewhere, and you're here to help him. But yesterday, we didn't have a single – we call them strikes. We didn't have a single strike in anything, in any department that, that affects our football players that our players deal with. We didn't have a single thing, which is awesome. So we talked about it this morning, being able to handle that success. The, we had a great practice on Saturday, and then we had a great day yesterday with no issues. Now we need to be able to take it to the practice field and have a great practice. Uh, and, and that's what we did. So to me, it's not uh, handling success. It is handling success, but it's just really driving it down on the details and, and just trying to be great today at what we do and then do it again tomorrow. So sorry, I know that's a long, extended answer, but got me or geeked up on that one. So exactly. It all sounds great till you realize, oh my God, we got eight teams ahead of us that are, are on the schedule. They're all ranked as well. And no doubt one of those teams is going to be Josh Heupel's Tennessee program.